what you're listening to there is a little bit of dub techno I made on this tiny little setup, which is built around the OxyCoral polyphonic synth module. I was experimenting with a larger setup, and I wanted to see if I could build a small dub voice with the classic echoes and the minor chords that you'd hear on that moving reverb and filtering going on. And so this is the kind of case I came up with, uh, including the ornament and crime here. It's 54 HP, so that's about as tiny as possible. Yes, it's sequenced over MIDI from the Oxy-1, but all this is doing is just sending in MIDI chords into the Oxy-Coral. I'm going to break down the patch, I'm going to explain how we built it, and along the way we'll make a bit of music. So let's get started. All right, we've cleaned off the patch cable so we can have a better view of what the building blocks of that sound are. The essence of a, a dub techno chord is it's a minor chord, and you play that through a lot of reverb and filter and delay. So I thought this might be a great job for the Oxy Choral. And the reason I think it works is the choral can be sequenced over MIDI. So not only can you sequence it over the classic CV inputs that you would have in any oscillator module in Eurac, it can also accept MIDI, and it's a TRS MIDI. So I can simply take this 3.5 millimeter cable here, patch that in there, patch it into the back of my Oxy-1, and I've also got the clock out here to synchronize my clock, and then I've got eight voices of polyphony here on the OxyCoral. We'll just patch the output straight from the OxyCoral into the little mixer here in my modular case. So we're just going to listen to the raw sound out of the choral. Now, when I press a key here to play a note, you hear it's a very short sound, and that's because we can adjust the attack and decay of the amplitude envelope. There, I've increased the decay, and now I can use that little knob there to dial up the attack to create a slower build-in. The idea with the Coral is you're able to configure it to have multiple parts. You can have each of the eight voices listening to a different MIDI channel, you playing a different sound using a different synth engine or sample player. You use the main knob here to navigate around these LEDs, and this is what controls things like which engines you have set or parameters that are defined. Each of the knobs have different functions, so this adjusts the timbre. You have a built-in envelope over here with sustain. You've also got a modulation envelope, which modulates the filter. And that brings me to this section here. We've got a filter. So if we do this, so I can adjust the timbre, just like in Mutable Plats, very, very similar. And I'm on engine two here, which is the wave shaping engine, which I found worked best for this patch. I'll open up the filter, and we can adjust the filter envelope. All of these parameters can be modulated over CV and also over MIDI. So for example, filter cutoff he is on CC1. Now by default it's listening on channel 1, so if I just go in here into my mod wheel on the Oxy1, press shift, and if you've watched my tutorial there's a link to it up there, I show you how to do this. I'll set the CC destination to mod wheel, which is uh, one, and that's, that's all it takes really. And then if we turn this, I'm uh, able to modulate the internal filter using MIDI. So I can draw a modulation curve here on the mod lane for sequencer 1, which I've set to chord mode, and this is now going to modulate the filter cutoff. So you can hear how the filter is opening and closing there. Great way of generating movement in sound without having to use any additional modules. You'll hear there's a bit of reverb going on there. That's because it also has a reverb as well. To get to that, we have to access the secondary functions, which are in white here. You press and hold the pink knob, and then you can turn this knob here. And you notice now the LEDs are illuminating white to show the reverb setting. I'll just turn off the reverb. And you can hear the sound is dry there. I'll also turn off the mod wheel. So it's very dry. Now I'll turn the reverb all the way up. Now you hear the reverb. It's got a chorus as well, chorus uh, effect built in, so we use that knob there, the secondary function, press and hold, and then we could turn off the chorus all the way down. I'll just go back to keyboard mode here. 
great plane sound. We can turn the chorus all the way up. This is a bit richer sound. Very powerful module. So that's going to be the heart of our patch today. Okay, well, what's the first thing we're going to do? We're going to add an extra layer of filtering. And to do that, we are going to take the output here from the left and right, and we are going to patch it into our ripples filter, which is a stereo version of the mutable ripples filter. We'll open it up, turn down the resonance. So we get some additional filtering going on. And of course we could modulate that using an LFO here from Batumi. But we would want to attenuate that LFO because after all, this LFO is going minus five to plus five volts, which is a little bit extreme. So let's just pop that sine wave here into the duet, which I'm going to use to attenuate. And I'll take the output of the duet and pop that into the frequency. So now it's a much smaller range of LFO. Now there, we got that lovely dub chord movement. Right, next, we need some delay. So we'll pop out our cables here as we move along our patch. Today, I have two new modules from Tark Audio. They were kind enough to send these to me. The Echo Sync is a clock delay with two delay modes. Uh, it has a tape delay and a standard digital delay. You can clock it with an external clock, which we will do in a second. It's a mono delay, so I have them in parallel here for a stereo effect, which is nice because it lets me set different delay times here on the left and right channel, which also is quite a nice effect. So let's patch the output here from the low pass two pole filter into the input of our delay. And we'll just leave it on clocked for now, and we'll just again patch it into our mixer. Let's take a listen. Now, we'll turn down the delay to be completely dry. Just reduce the filtering down a little here. Now we'll turn up our delay. Well, that is very nice, a long, lovely delay tail going on there with a ton of movement. And of course, you can clock this so we could also get clock synced delays. So let's just take our clock here and we're going to patch it out of the back of uh, the Oxy-1 into our mult up here. And we will just patch that down into the clock mode. And now you'll see the LEDs flash because now we're synced the clock, lovely. Things are coming together. Now we need a little bit of reverb. We need a lot of reverb actually, because it is dub techno. So naturally that calls for our best friend, the FX8. And we will just use these tiny little handy patch cables here. I found these to be very useful to patch into the left and right channels of the FX8. Nice bit of shimmer reverb. Oh, 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 love it, love it. Oh, yes. I'm going to modulate the timbre on Oxy Coral using MIDI CC. It's on CC12. So I'm going to go in here, press Shift on that. I'm going to set the CC destination to CC12. And uh, we will just limit the modulation range down to about half range, so about 64, 0 to 64. So I've set up the modulation there to be CC12. If I go into the mod lane now, I can draw in a mod curve here using my finger, which I love doing because we get lots of different movement. And now you hear that timbre adjusting and moving over time. Doesn't matter. Great. Well, the one last thing we need are drums. And of course, 
if you want drums and you have an ornament in crime, you have the bug crack applet, which is perfect for creating a very simple drum and hat pattern. And if you've watched my tutorial, again, the link is up there or down below. I've covered everything here on the ornament and crime at this stage. We're going to use bug crack to generate a kick on this channel here. We are going to generate a hat on this channel here. Now that we have bug crack set up, I have trigger sequencer set here very simply with uh, a kick drum on a 4-4 pattern and just a, a hi-hat. Now I can easily dial in different hi-hats and the sound is uh, dialed to be fairly muffled because that's typically what you get for dub techno. All we need now is just to patch a clock in and I'll just take a mult of the clock here. That goes into the trigger sequencer and then we'll just use a little couple of cable clips here to tidy up the patch cables so we can see what's going on and have a play. Now, it's a very basic patch. There's a lot more you could do with this. You could certainly add a whole lot more modulation. You could modulate things using MIDI LFOs. You could reroute Batumi here to all sorts of different places. In fact, we could take uh, the Batumi and also use it to modulate, for example, um, I'll just mult this. We might even use it to modulate some of the parameters on the FX8 reverb. So the reverb is actually gonna change as well. You hear it moving there. And you hear the, the hat. Actually, the hat should be in this channel here. So you can play around with trigger sequencer, of course. I think I did a video on that a while back. Remember, we're modulating timbre using LFO. That's a very simple patch, just showing you how you can use just a few modules to make quite a nice dub techno sound. Of course, the heart of the patch is the oxychoral in this case, because we did need a polyphonic voice. Now you can configure oxychoral to have multiple parts, which means each voice can be played separately. So you can have a bass line as well as your main chords coming out. But there's only one stereo pair, unfortunately, which means everything will get processed through the same effects chain. I also wanted to use the Echo Sync modules from Tark Audio. Um, I will do a video on these. Uh, if you're watching in the future, they may have already been released. Uh, they haven't been released at the time of videoing. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, I love hearing from people and ask questions and take suggestions. So do let me know what you think. And thanks for watching.